I'm Brett the Hitman Hart and I was born in Calgary, Alberta in 1957 and I'm quite probably the greatest pro wrestler that ever laced up a pair of wrestling boots. Coming back after a wrestling match with my brother Owen and giving him a big hug and thanking him for the match and maybe having my dad maybe in the front row watching it and uh, maybe some of my other brothers and sisters and people that uh, to have them in the audience watching us wrestle would have been a great, uh, that would be a happy vision for me. Well, I have no doubt that my greatest fear would be dying a slow death, period. That would be it. I most admire uh, Muhammad Ali for being my greatest living hero. Mostly just how he's conducted himself in the last uh, 10 or 15 years. And how he's uh, moved on from his, uh, his illness to have a better life than he had maybe before. And my greatest hero that was dead, or has passed away, would be, uh, I've thought about this a lot, but it would probably be Abraham Lincoln. I don't know why. I just think he was a, a, an interesting character that had a lot of virtue. Well, I've been told that my one big flaw is that I'm not very punctual. People that lie. I have no time or patience for people that lie or have no integrity. I believe the most overrated virtue would be um, people that use religion to harm themselves or to harm other people, all in the name of their God. I, I find that unconscionable. As a wrestler, I um, certainly never lied ever, but um, I think sometimes you know you have to lie about some things, especially if you're trying to protect the innocent. I'd like to live exactly where I do live. I like to, I love living in Calgary, but I think if I could. Um, make an exodus out of Calgary about every uh, January and go to Hawaii for about uh, five months, that would suit me just fine. Uh, the talent I'd love to have the most would be to be like Steven Spielberg and write and direct movies like he does. I would love to be like Norman Rockwell and have the uh, artistic talent that he does. Even though I do believe in deep, you know, in myself that I, I actually have some artistic talent, but nothing along the, quite along the lines of Norman Rockwell. Um, I have a lot of creativity in my, uh, in my blood that goes a lot further and beyond wrestling. I had a great imagination for what I did in my wrestling matches, but uh, I believe that the best parts of my brain have still been untapped, believe it or not. <laughs> it's uh, important if, if people see me as a hero and uh, an icon, whether it's in wrestling or sometimes I think that I'm measured now more for what I've, what I've done after I got out of my, my wrestling career than what I did in, in the wrestling ring. Two years ago, I suffered a stroke and I found it really frustrating and difficult to come to terms with, especially the, f the first few days and hours that it happened. I was a little bitter, I think, for a little while because I, I worked really hard to get home and to finally find some peace and happiness and be home with my family and stuff like that. And going from lifting, say, 350 pounds in the gym on a bench press to waking up the next day and not being able to turn your hand over was really tough for me to come to terms with. And I remembered meeting a lot of kids that had cancer that uh, were down to their last few days, Make-A-Wish kids and things like that. And I reminded myself of the courage that they had. and I. I'd like to think that that buoyed me somewhat and I found the courage to recover as best to, enough to sit here today and talk to this camera. <laughs> if I could come back, I would love to be an eagle. I'd love to soar in the skies and just the power and the grace and the beauty of an eagle. There's no better feeling, I think, to have someone that really loves you hold you in their arms. I say the word, yep, a lot. After an hour-long wrestling match, I hear the sound of the bell ringing. It's always a pleasant sound. I would love to write a book that was the best book ever written about my profession. One that really chronicles my life and puts it in perspective for a lot of people. It makes them appreciate what I've done. And if I somehow ended up winning a Pulitzer Prize for that, I certainly wouldn't mind it. I would hate to be a bullfighter. That would be the worst profession I can think of off the top of my head. I just seems so chicken shit, you know, to, to kill a bull, some beautiful, powerful bull and to torment it and torture it to death and kill it and for, for what? I, I don't understand. I don't see the spectacle in it at all. I don't see any uh, courage in it either. I love to ride my bicycle, not a motorbike, my bicycle. I love to ride my bicycle all over as far as I can go and up and down everywhere I go 
And I think the reason I love to ride my bike so much is because um, it reminds me of when I was a little kid. And I think it's always given me a chance to think. I always think and sort of solve my problems when I ride my bike. And it's a great form of meditation for me. Um, the happiest memories I can think of would be probably like Christmas morning at my uh, father's house as a kid. Didn't have to be any specific Christmas. You know, most, most of the Christmases I had as a kid, they weren't about um, a lot of big gifts and things like that. Uh, it was always a pretty humble kind of Christmas. I had 11 brothers and sisters, and so there was always a lot of love and sort of happiness that went around that, um, that I'll never forget. I think the biggest influence on me was my father, and I think I understood wrestling from an early age of being an art and that there was a real skill to it. I believe my greatest achievement was probably to walk away from wrestling. Um, I think my most obvious characteristic is that I'm pretty personable. If you want to really make me happy, you'd make me a really good steak. I've learned over the last few years that uh, it's, it's important to don't let the past drag you down and to look forward to tomorrow. And my whole attitude is to just be happy and be glad I'm alive. You know, I do have a motto and I've had a motto that I, I've always just kept to myself and told myself for all these years. But uh, I've always believed that, uh, I've always had to remind myself that when you're right, you're right. And when you're wrong, you're wrong. And to always know the difference and to be man enough to say so when you know the difference.